Okay, please ignore the way I look. I feel exhausted right now and my hair is just not cooperating, but very excited to announce I'm starting, hypothetically, a reading vlog, yay! This reading vlog was spurred on by the fact that I got myself some presents uh, after passing my thesis defense a couple of Fridays ago. So essentially this, this purchase was spurred on by the fact that I read a couple of books last month or earlier this month that I, I really adored and I wanted to read more by these two authors. So the first author being Nina LaCour, I read We Are Okay. I just, I was in a really bad place but I was in such a bad place that We Are Okay kind of just hit the spot, like it matched my level of sadness, which if you read that book, I'm okay. It was just at that time, it was the perfect book to read, and I really like Nina LaCour's writing. I like how she creates these characters with very few words, if that makes sense. Like I don't feel like we're getting you know, these long lengthy novels exploring grief, we just see a lot from the actions and the thoughts of the characters. So I was like, I gotta read more by Nina LaCour. Um, I also found out that she has a book that features like a band or music. And you know me, I have to read any book that features bands or music. So I got that one. And then I saw that there were a couple of other books that I liked. And it turns out like her entire bibliography is just what I drive with in terms of why I contemporary. So, I got pretty much all of the rest of her books. Unfortunately, the cover for Everything Leads to You doesn't match the other ones. I specifically ordered the cover that is supposed to match this, and I'll insert a picture of it here. I don't know why they sent me the other cover. It's fine, it's not a big deal. I'm really glad that I got these two covers though because these are super cute. So this is Hold Still, her debut novel, The Disenchantments. This is the one that's about a band. And then Everything Leads to You is another one of her very popular books. I believe this is like, not quite Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but it has something to do with like, digging into the life of a starlet or something, I don't know. And then the other author whose books I really liked, and you may have already seen the covers as I was putting it down, was Talia Hibbert. I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and I really enjoyed it. I love Talia Hibbert's writing. It's just so fun, and the way she creates her characters is beautiful. I just didn't really vibe with the love interest in the first book. But then I saw the synopsis for the other two books, and I was like, maybe I will like the love interest for the other books, and I will like the other Brown sisters somehow even more than Chloe. I adored Chloe but perhaps I will get the full five-star fulfillment I was looking for. I bought myself, take a hint, Danny Brown, which is, I believe Danny Brown is the middle Brown sister, and I think this one will be the one that I enjoy the most because Danny is a PhD student. I'm a grad student, not a PhD student, but I definitely understand the grad student grind. There's some like mishap with a jock and they're kind of thrown together for some reason. I don't know. I think I will like this one the best, but I'm very excited for also Actor Age Eve Brown, which Justine so very kindly gifted me also for my thesis defense. So thank you, Justine. That was like the sweetest thing to come home to after my thesis defense. Yeah, I'm also very excited to read this. Eve is the youngest sister and she's definitely the most flighty, I would say, of the three sisters. So um, I don't know how I'm going to feel about Eve. I think I'm just going to have to like fly by the seat of my pants with regards to her, but I'm still very, very excited with this. Like I said, like even though I didn't like the love interest in Get a Life, Chloe Brown, I really like Talia Hibbert's writing and just how fun and in touch with the times it is, if that makes sense. So yeah, those are the, how many books is this? five books that I want to read. I don't know if I mentioned this, I'm on spring break right now. I still have a bunch of work to do, like I kind of slacked off in the week before with the spring break and I need to catch up on like grading and some class assignments, but I still have a lot more time than I usually do to read. So I'm hoping starting tomorrow, which is Wednesday the 16th, I will just be able to sit down and chunk out a bunch of reading because I'm super, super excited to read all of these books. So yeah, I will update you guys when I have finally picked up a book and started to read. Hello, it's Wednesday morning and 
most importantly for a little bit of an update i have decided to do the bare minimum today which if you know me i'm a goddamn overachiever and my half ass is like everyone else's whole ass and today i'm actually going to half ass some shit i got i think 60 80 80 pages into the disenchantments last night the main character person you're hearing everything from is a dude and he's in love with his best friend pretty much and he's like the roadie for his best friend who he's in love with she, he's taking her band on a road trip to tour for american kids it's a really tough time in high school because you define yourself by so many things and then you go off to college and you completely change and you just don't understand how meaningless everything in high school was but at the time in high school you think that everything is the end of the world and everything is so dramatic which is like fair like that's all you know but it's just really interesting to see it especially as an adult very far removed from american high school to see these kids who are like okay i banked my entire future on this it's the end of the world if it doesn't happen like i don't know what i'm gonna do yeah i think it's a really interesting conversation i do like the idea of forming an all-girl band in high school and being absolutely terrible and then going and touring for fun because that's what you do right before you have to be a serious adult who goes off to college. So I'm gonna get to work so that I can return to this. I just hit myself in the face with a book. I'm gonna get to work, read more of this today, and I'll update you guys when I have more thoughts. the disenchantments by nina lacour about like two minutes ago i enjoyed this i don't want to say it's my favorite i think we are okay definitely hit a lot deeper than uh the disenchantments but i really enjoyed a lot of the messaging of the story because we get to see these high school kids who have lived in their little bubble who haven't gotten to experience a lot of things outside of you know their high school life they get to travel throughout the Pacific Northwest and meet all kinds of characters, answer questions, and have this really beautiful adventure. I would say I, I think the my least favorite part about this book is the main character himself, Colby. At some points he's just like a horny male teenager and I just didn't enjoy reading about that, but that's like my own sort of thing. So today I'm gonna give this a four out of five stars. I did really enjoy this. There was just a character that I didn't really drive with, but outside of that, I really enjoyed the story and everything that happened. So Okay, very glad to have read this. I'm starting to think about what I'm going to start on next, and it's currently between Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and Everything Leads to You. I'm gonna go ahead and log everything on both my digital tracking spreadsheet and in my reading journal, just because that's what I like to do for a few minutes after I stop reading. It really rounds out the reading experience for me, so I will stop waving around these books and get onto that. pages into take a hint danny brown this is insane she is also a bisexual graduate student who is a sagittarius we have so much in common i love this girl uh, i'm starting to think that i too need to explore my witchy side because if it's working for her it might work for me we'll see she seems like my long lost sister or something i don't know i love her already she's teaching to oh my god also, it's late March in this book, and this is a perfect time to read this, apparently. I'm having fun. I'm very happy right now. So 
so I haven't not had bangs in a very long time and earlier this year I just stopped styling my bangs and cutting my bangs and uh, I haven't had my hair up very often but now I know I kind of look like Megamind when I have my hair up. <laughs> Maybe it's just like the viewfinder, how I'm looking at the viewfinder, but y'all I look like, like my forehead looks massive. Anyway, hi, it's Thursday the 17th, happy St. Patrick's Day or whatever. I pretty much spent all of yesterday reading and all of today cleaning. Don't ask me why both of those things happened, but I did a lot of reading yesterday. I literally finished both the disenchantments and take a hit Danny Brown. So I'm here to give you guys my final thoughts on what could possibly be my new favorite romance of all time. If you don't know what the Brown Sisters books are, they're these four very posh black British women who get their own individual romance books. So I read the second book, this is the second sister, Danny Brown, Danica Brown. Um, she is a PhD student. She's bisexual, she's witchy, she's a Sagittarius too, aka like me and her vibe on all of all fronts. I also had no idea, I for some reason thought she was a STEM PhD, but she's actually like a literature, women's studies PhD, I think. It was never really said outright what kind of PhD she's going for, but it sounds like the papers she writes has to do with intersectionality and feminism and all of that good stuff. And that is not quite my uh, program area, but I do do a lot of like DEI work, so it was like really weird to see myself represented in Danny Brown like so much of my life is similar and then to have a love interest like Zaf so Zafir Ansari is the love interest for taking in Danny Brown he is like the perfect love interest for a grad student he does a lot of things that just are such huge love language tickles for a grad student I don't know if that makes sense but like he, I don't want to spoil it, but there's just so many things that he does for someone who is a workaholic grad student that is just so special. So Zaf is also really, he's just such a soft, wonderful dude. He reads romance novels. I don't know why I love that so much, but I love that a lot. Like he literally in their first interaction was listening to a romance book on audiobook and accidentally hits play and the smut is read out loud to Danny. And I just thought that was hilarious. Talia Hibbert's writing, it just doesn't miss. She is so fun and quippy and real and just so like in touch with these characters. Yeah, I just, I'm crazy about this series. I loved, loved, loved this book and I can't wait to read Actor Age Eve Brown. The other book that I started last night after I finished Take Hint Danny Brown was Hold Still by Nina LaCroix and this is following a teen girl after the suicide of her best friend. Uh, she tries to grapple with the grief. I'm only like, I think I only got 30 pages in. Yeah, I didn't get very far in but it was, it's just, it's hitting very, very deep. Don't want to overshare too much but of course I have my own traumas in life um, and death is not something I've ever been able to handle very well so I just am feeling so many of the things that I felt before but not in a traumatic way. It feels like almost affirming or validating to read what Caitlin the main character is going through in the wake of her friend's suicide and to see that like all the things that I felt previously in experiencing death in a fictional character. For some reason that's affirming and really nice and again Nina LaCour's writing just hit out of the park. I mentioned this earlier but there are these special like reprint editions with different art that matches all of Nina LaCour's books across her books. They just released a paperback version of Watch Over Me and I'll put the cover up here and it matches all of these covers. I literally went to Barnes Noble, checked if my local Barnes Noble had it and lo and behold they had it so if i'm feeling good today or tomorrow i'm going to try to go to barnes noble and pick that up and i will take you guys with me but for now i'll just let you know that i started this and i'll check in again when i read more and have more thoughts <laughs> I finished about an hour and a half ago Hold Still by Nina LaCour. I had to take some time 
because I sobbed like a bitch baby throughout this entire book. That's to be expected, this book does explore grief after the suicide of a friend as I mentioned earlier, but I think the thing that really hit me was we do see the letters, what the friend wrote before she committed suicide, and just seeing that depiction of depression and the way that she spoke about it just really hit close to home. It doesn't try to ask why Ingrid is depressed, it's just, you know, talked about like she goes to therapy, she's on medication. We don't try to ask why and I think that's what I really appreciate the most about this book is that Caitlin could just constantly be asking why. Um, and we do see like, you know, some of what Caitlin learns about their friendship through the letters, which is not necessarily related to the depression, but we're, we're not following Caitlin as she tries to solve like why she killed herself. Like She knows that Ingrid was sad and having a hard time, but she was a teenager. What do you do when you're a teenager and your best friend is depressed and you just really don't know what to do? I'm destroyed. I'm emotionally wrecked. So because of that, I... I'm going to pick up Act Your Age, Eve Brown, because self-love, self-care, read Talia Hibbert. Generally, I thought Eve was fun in her previous mentions in the other books, so hopefully that won't get in the way too much. Plus, it looks like we are tackling some of that, you know, youngest sibling lostness in this book. So I'm very interested. Um, no idea what the love interest is like, so we're just going to jump in and see how I feel. I look like a child. Um, I'm rethinking this hairstyle, but it's Friday the 18th. I have some errands to run. I have some packages to ship out, Barnes & Noble order to pick up, and I wanted to go to TJ Maxx to get some stuff for my fridge because I've been obsessed with those like TikTok fridge organization videos, and so yeah, I'm gonna join the hype and fix this hair because I'm looking a little childish. I actually ended up going to Marshalls instead of TJ Maxx, but pretty much the same thing. A little cheaper, I think. Um, I got tons of great stuff for organizing, so very excited about that. I also got Diego this little slow feeder bowl. I was thinking I could like freeze some uh, treats in here and then give that to him like on a hot day. And then I just got myself some Starbucks because I was feeling hungry. Uh, but then I realized I kind of want to go to uh, Whole Foods and get myself some flowers. So yeah, I'm gonna go see how bad that situation is. Back at home, so I went to the post office, went to Barnes & Noble, went to TJ Maxx, did all that good stuff. I'm very excited to reorganize my fridge, as dorky as that may be. I did want to share with you guys, since this is a reading vlog, my haul for today, if you may. Of course, the first thing I got, which I mentioned earlier, was Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This is the uh, cover that matches all of the other books by Nina LaCour that I've read so far in this reading vlog because I have a problem. I love this artist so much. I should really like follow them on like Instagram or something because I just I love the art style I love the colors and just the illustrations they all go so well especially if you actually read the book like seeing what's on the cover and then reading the book is really great and the other book that I got that I didn't know released in paperback I thought I wrote it down but apparently I didn't was A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth this is a YA fantasy and I know I said I would kind of start straying away from YA fantasies but this is this is it seems like it's right up my alley. Also, um, Shalaya from Shout Out Shalaya, I will link her review down below. Uh, said a lot of really good things about this and I got really excited about it when it came out, but I didn't want to buy the big scary hardback. Um, so I waited for the paperback. Now it's in my possession, woohoo. I'm actually, I think, going to start editing this vlog while I wait for my new fridge stuff to dry because I washed it. And I'll get some reading done eventually. I'll check it in then. Diego. Very chaotically, I elected 
to get my hair cut today. I just literally called yesterday afternoon and was like, can I get a haircut appointment? And the local place was like, yeah. I don't want to cut my hair, but I have split ends of the wazoo, so I really need to cut my hair. And also have like a professional fix my bang situation. But here's the outfit. I'm wearing my pull and bear jeans. All right, I'll check in with you guys when my hair is shorter. My toxic trait is every time I get my hair cut short, I regret it. But I still show up to the salon and ask for my hair short. Hi, this is my new hair. Not a big fan of it. It's nice and fluffy now because hairstylists like put stuff on it, but. I finally wanted to share. Last night I finished After Age Eve Brown. I kind of had the same experience as the first Book in the series so get a life chloe brown where i didn't like the love interest at all and so that kind of hindered my full enjoyment of the book i love eve which is really unexpected like i kind of expected to get annoyed with her like her love interest does at times it's not like the annoying kind of messiness it's a very endearing kind of messiness when eve messes up she just cares a lot she has a big heart and so she's not doing anything maliciously she doesn't mean to make mistakes she's trying in her earnest to either follow in the steps of her sisters or to make someone else happy and so you know she hasn't gotten the chance to really explore what she's good at and she hasn't really realized that a lot of what she's good at and what she enjoys is helping other people. So seeing that kind of development with her like pretty much made this the four stars for me. Did not like the love interest so I had to kind of dock it down from the five star rating. Overall I still really enjoyed it. I am currently not really in the mood to read. That being said, if I do read I will be picking up Watch Over Be- Watch Over Me by Nina McGurr and or everything leads to you which are the two books that i acquired recently that i still haven't read yet and i am ditching my entire tbr down there for these two books so yeah i'll update you guys when i have more thoughts okay so i guess this is how i have to wrap up this video but as i was filming the wrap up for this video my camera started getting all of these errors and now it can no longer read the memory cards that I have for it. So we're just going to wrap this up using my webcam. I'm sorry if I don't look at the camera when I'm talking about webcam. I'm so used to like zoom and looking at my screen. Let's wrap this up as quickly as possible because this is painful for me to record. I read six books over spring break. I finished all of the books that were mentioned in this video and that I thought I was going to read at the start of this video, so yay. Let's wrap up the last two books. Oh god, I'm all over the place. I forgot to mention that it's Sunday night and I have finished two more books since I last checked in and I didn't film much today because Diego and I had a date day where we went out, we did some errands together, then we went to the park. So it was mostly a day for me and him. And then I did some reading in the afternoon. I finished the last two books. The first one being Everything Leads to You by Annie LaCour. I found that this was in sort of the same vein as the Taylor Jenkins Reads books that are set in like the Daisy Jones, Evelyn Hugo, Malibu Rising universe where we're following a starlet well, not really a starlet. Um, we're following kind of the aftermath of an unplanned pregnancy caused by a movie star and how that kind of has trickled down over the generations and caused some uh, things to happen, such as someone finding a letter. And so we're having the main character trying to chase down someone connected to the letter um, and it leads them to all of this great stuff. It's a really fun story that just has all of this depth and cleverness to it that I really enjoyed. Again, in the same vein as like Daisy Jones and the Six or Malibu Rising, etc, etc, um, with all of these like intertwining storylines. I just finished maybe a half hour ago Watch Over Me, which is the last Nina LaCroix book that I haven't read yet until Yerba Buena gets published. Um, this is a book that follows Mila after she phases out of the foster system and she goes to work on a farm that specifically takes in foster kids who have phased out of the system to, I guess, kind of help 
around the farm and then with a foster family that is being raised on the farm, if that makes any sense. Um, this book is centered around dealing with childhood and just general trauma and as someone who is currently in therapy for dealing with that trauma, this really hit home. I thought this was an absolutely beautiful and well done description and depiction of trauma and coming to terms with it. I think that the kind of resolution with the trauma is a little idealistic, but again, it's a book, right? It's supposed to be suspended disbelief, everything's all good, happily ever after at the end. So I, I wish it happened in real life like that, like you could just accept your trauma and then move on and be a normal human being. But otherwise, I absolutely adored this book. I thought it was such a powerful conversation and Again, Neil Crow's writing just, it, it tickles a spot in my brain that makes me extremely happy. It is all of the six books I read over spring break. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that it was mostly just me giving you my final thoughts on these books. I will also link down below my Goodreads so you can see my Goodreads review for each of these books and my blog because I did wrap up all but two of these books on my blog recently. Um, I'm trying to do wrap-ups very consistently on my blog so you can at least get an idea of what I've been reading recently and how I feel about all of my reads. And I find that it's a much better platform for me in terms of talking about books because as you can tell when I'm talking live, sometimes the words are not just there. But when I'm typing and making a blog post, it's a lot easier for me to like edit my words and whatnot. I digress. I will link all that below. Please check it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope you're having a good day and I hope you have a good rest of your week. I'll see you next time. Bye.